Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and I got something interesting to show you today. It is Google Play running on a Chromebook. So we have the ability now, at least with this particular Chromebook in a particular way, uh, to officially, in a Google-sanctioned way, uh, grab all of the Android apps that we have bought and paid for and use them on a Chromebook. Now right now, this only works on this Chromebook Flip that I bought here uh, the other day for this very video, uh, but it will be coming soon to other Chromebooks as well. And I'll leave those uh, down below in the video description. So as always, I like to give my usual disclaimers though. Uh, this is something I purchased with my own funds, this Chromebook Flip. Nobody is reviewing this video before it is posted. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own and nobody is paying for this review either. We're going to kind of step through uh, the very early days of Android and Chrome OS integration here. Uh, it's got a long way to go, but it is working really, really well out of the box. And like I said, uh, more Chromebooks will be supporting this as we get through the rest of the summer. So keep checking back on that list to see if yours is on the list. So uh, this is what it looks like. You get a, a Google Play icon down here, you load it up and you have your Google Play Store along with all the apps that you may have purchased on your Android devices. So we uh, can load up our favorite emulators, all of the other apps that you might be using. Uh, for the most part, I haven't found anything that doesn't run. Some things run better than others and we'll kind of get into that uh, as we go through my list of things that I want to share with you on this. Now the first thing I want to show you though is how you get this to run on your Chromebook. So this might be relevant when we get into the mysterious future and your Chromebook supports this. Uh, so what you want to do is go over to your settings here in the lower right hand corner, uh, go to About Chrome OS, and uh, what you're going to do here is click on More Info, and what'll happen here is you'll get an option for Channel, and what you want to do is just click Change the Channel and go to Developer, and this will change obviously when uh, Google makes this more of a standard feature that might be in its beta or in its stable channel, but uh, for the moment you want to go over to the de Developer Mode and set it to that. Now one thing they do caution you about is that any data that you have stored locally on the Chromebook gets wiped out when you initiate that Developer feature. So you definitely want to uh, make sure you back up all of your locally stored data before you turn that on. It's going to download a big update and then reboot. And when it comes back up, uh, the Google Play Store will be available to you on here, which is pretty cool. Now, as we get into things, though, I want to show you just a couple of little gotchas I noticed so far. So one of the things that's happened uh, with Android apps that did run on uh, Chrome OS prior was that you couldn't resize the window. And that issue uh, is so far an issue here. You can't make this window any larger by dragging it. Uh, you can click the maximize button though and get it to go full screen but I found that this bar up here uh, always stays the same. Now this is a Chromebook flip which goes into tablet mode. Uh, that doesn't change. That bar stays up there and again I think we're going to see this change over time so I'm not digging it yet uh, because there is a long way to go on this but I think they're trying to keep a uh, consistent window size so you can't uh, make the windows different sizes like you can do on uh, the Remix OS that we looked at. Now this also adds additional settings to your device. So you're going to have Chrome OS settings, then you'll have Android settings, which will run uh, in that virtual environment that I talked about. So uh, to get to those settings, what you do is go into your settings screen like we did a little bit earlier. This is a Chrome OS window, by the way, so this one we can resize and move around. Uh, so it's going to be kind of hard sometimes to know what is running in Chrome OS and what's running in Android as this moves forward. Uh, what you want to do here is go over to Android apps and select Android app settings, and that will pull up that very familiar screen you might have seen before uh, when you're running with Android on your device. And uh, this is actually Android 6.01 running on here right now. I don't know if they'll be updating uh, the Android uh, virtual machine in here as often as they might do on uh, other Android devices, but so far it seems to be pretty up to date in what it has running on here. Uh, what's also interesting is that your notifications will get integrated into uh, this little section down here. So this is where normally you would see your uh, Google notifications and uh, get some of your Chrome OS stuff. You'll also get Android notifications down here as well. So there is a uh, rather interesting blend of some things that uh, will move over from Android into the Chrome OS world and vice versa. And one of those other things that will move over into each world uh, is your downloads folder. That's the only way you can get files back and forth between the Android apps on here and uh, the apps that run on the Chrome side. So you see I have my downloads uh, uh, folder selected here on the native Chrome file browser. And if I load up the Android file browser called ES File Explorer, uh, we'll go in here and you'll notice that those same files are in the downloads folder there. So Android can see that Chrome folder and that's it. Everything else uh, seems to stay put on whatever operating system is running that particular application. So downloads is really the only place where you can kind of blend things together. And that's kind of a good thing because it means that everything is kind of running in their own little sandboxes and there won't be, uh, if there is a potential piece of malware on the Android side, uh, it may not work its way over to your computer. So it looks like they very uh, securely isolated everything here. 
Now, when you download an Android app from the Google Play Store on your Chromebook, it will behave just like it might on a, a phone or tablet. You'll have the option here to load it up right out of Google Play, uh, or you can go into your app launcher here and get it there. Now, normally when you're in a Chromebook, uh, clicking on one of your apps will load it up like a web page, essentially. They act like a bookmark uh, because Chrome OS has been a very web-centric operating system. So you see here we've got uh, the YouTube page basically booting up in a web browser window. But if I go back over here now and load up our Pac-Man game, uh, you'll see that will load itself up as an Android app. Now I have this one running in full screen. We still have uh, that uh, title bar up at the top there. Even when I flip this around, uh, it will still stay there. But uh, the app does seem to run pretty nicely here. So we'll let this load up for a second. And what I found too when you're playing this, first of all, it recognizes the keyboard, so you're able to do that. Uh, game controllers do not work, unfortunately. I tried a bunch of game controllers that work on my Android devices. None of them seem to be uh, detected. I was able to connect to them with Bluetooth uh, through the Chrome OS uh, uh, control panel, but uh, the games themselves did not recognize this. And I think that's part of the sandboxing we saw earlier. But uh, both, most of these Android games, all of them that, I, that I've tried actually, have been working really nicely, especially the ones that typically run well on a phone or a tablet. What's interesting about the Chromebook Flip is that uh, it has the rock chip processor that we also saw on my GPD XD gaming handheld that I really love quite a bit. And what's interesting is, is that there doesn't seem to be any kind of discernible overhead from these Android games running on top of Chrome OS. So I ran the 3D Mark benchmark on both devices. Uh, this one did about 10% better. It might just be because it's got a slightly faster variant of the processor. Uh, this is still running Android 4.4, I believe, and this one, of course, has got that 6.01 uh, running on its Android layer, but it did perform a little bit better, uh, and really, I was expecting it to run very poorly, and it didn't, and this is just the early alpha here, so it really does work pretty nicely. I cannot resize the window, as I mentioned, but I can uh, bring the window down into a windowed mode and move it around, as you can see there. It doesn't seem to take all that much time to do it. I did notice there was a little bit of a delay when I was closing out the app. It takes a second for it to kind of shut down and bring you back to normal, but you can multitask while that's going on. So I can pull down my uh, thing there. I can load up multiple Android apps at once, for example. So maybe if we want to have Pac-Man and uh, my File Explorer, both Android apps running at the same time, we can get those going there. Uh, but again, you don't have at the moment any control over the size of these windows, but we'll let both uh, load up here. We'll see how well it does multitasking. Let me get rid of Google Play here for a second. Uh, this device, I think, only has uh, two gigabytes of RAM. Uh, so that, that will limit you a little bit. And this is where, when you're shopping for Chromebooks, maybe having some extra RAM might come in handy. So maybe you want to look now for a four gigabyte Chromebook versus a two. Uh, so you can have all this stuff going on at once here. We'll go ahead and just start a game here and see if it uh, multitasks. So it does pause the game uh, when, you, when you lose focus on the window, but it does seem to come back uh, right away when you bring that up there. Now, if we can run Android games on here, what about some of the many Android emulators that are out there so you can play some of your classic video games on these devices? They run pretty good too. Let's take a look at Raycast. All right, so here we are taking a look at Raycast, which is a Sega Dreamcast emulator on Android. And this is usually something that runs very well on my little GPD XD handheld, which also runs with that rock chip processor. Uh, and here it's running pretty well as well. We're seeing frame rates anywhere from 30 to 60. It depends on what kind of cutscene is, is being rendered at the time. But uh, this is a very demanding emulator because it is uh, rendering 3D graphics. It's very uh, CPU intensive as well as very intensive on the GPU side of things as well. And again, there's really no overhead that I'm seeing from Android running on this device. It feels as smooth as it does on my uh, GPD handheld that I've been playing Dreamcast games on all weekend. So this really does feel, uh, again, pretty nice. Now, a lot of people have asked me over the years whether or not you can get Skype working on a Chromebook. And the answer is largely no. They do have a web client, as you can see here, uh, running on Chrome, uh, the web browser through Chrome OS. But if I try to make a video call to my account here from my phone, what you'll see here is a message that pops up that says they missed a call from me because I don't have the ability through the web browser to do that. Now you are gonna see now something else pop up here though, and that is the Android app, which is going to take over the call and work now. So it's able to even know that the Android app is present here. And uh, here we go, we can see me talking to the phone. I'm going to switch over to my two up view here, and you can see the view that you get back from uh, our Chrome uh, Chromebook here running on Android. So a little bit of a pixelated video, not the best quality that I've seen. I got a little bit better quality earlier when I was testing this, but it does seem to work 
work uh, pretty well here as we're uh, trying out uh, Skype on Chrome, uh, running with the Android version of the apps. A lot of layers here, but you can see uh, there is already some integration here between apps that don't get supported on the web side that can be supported on the Android side and everything kind of just moves over. Pretty cool stuff. Now there will be a few issues you'll encounter as you're playing with things. I did find some flakiness with Microsoft Word. Again, these are all Android apps that are not designed to work the way we're using them at the moment. I'm sure that will change over time, but if I go into my doc documents folder here, uh, you'll see I have two documents and I can load them up and work on them. So I can load up uh, right from our file explorer actually and start uh, messing around with this thing. And uh, what I'll do here is just add a little bit more to uh, the document here and I'll go ahead and save it. I did find there were some issues when I had autosave enabled. It didn't always save the document that I thought it was saving. So I turned that off because this document doesn't even load up at all anymore. It just got corrupted. So uh, there's definitely some issues with that. Uh, but you'll see here that document got saved. If I load it back up again, uh, it should hopefully have our new changes saved on there. So that's pretty nice. But uh, you'll notice that because it's in the documents folder, we can't get this on the Chrome OS side. So if we wanted to go into Chrome OS and load up a uh, Chrome window to send an email, you won't be able to get to that file uh, on the Android side of the system. You have to make sure it ends up in the downloads folder. A couple other things related to that is that you can't use SD cards or USB sticks at the moment uh, on the Android side of the equation here yet either. So everything stays uh, local to the sandbox that got set up. Your only uh, intermediary here is the downloads folder, which does appear uh, on apps running on both Chrome OS and on Android. And another issue I ran into relates to Kodi. It kind of runs a little odd on here. As you can see, it doesn't have the title bar that some those other apps do, but it doesn't run full screen either. Somehow I managed to get it to run full screen by clicking somewhere by accident, but again, this is not going to be uh, something that is at least out of the box going to work uh, as well on this uh, Chrome OS device, and right now it seems to be locking up on me. So you definitely can see where there's going to be some issues. Another thing that I ran into with this as well as we're reloading everything is that I was not able to get access to my network through the Android uh, sandbox here, so I could not add uh, video folders on my network to be able to play anything back. So as a Kodi thing at the moment, this is probably not going to work. You can add Add local folders like that, uh, downloads folders you saw when we poked around in there, but uh, my network is just not accessible at all, uh, either the SMB portion or uh, using the uh, UPnP option also. So it doesn't, you know, it seems to, if we have a local file to play it, but it really isn't a very good experience right now, you're probably better off uh, using the native Chrome OS video player to play back your offline movie files. And of course, those will work on an SD card, uh, which at the moment, the Android side of this won't. So there are some things that aren't quite there yet, but uh, I must say this is really running better than I expected it to as a first go. In fact, uh, every Android app I've downloaded uh, more or less ran and actually ran at a pretty decent clip about where I'd expect a rock ship based device to run. So this is really a uh, amazing uh, accomplishment, I think, from Google to really uh, very nicely blend their two operating systems together and beginning to really make uh, these Chromebooks very, very versatile devices that uh, will really function well, both as a very simple device that educa educators are using and other folks are using right now, but also as something that adds a little bit more value in that uh, you can run apps and other software uh, beyond a web browser on it. So we're going to keep an eye on this as uh, things develop. We'll hang on to this Chromebook flip for a while. Uh, there are a number of other Chromebooks that are compatible in or will be compatible, including that Chromebook 14 we looked at recently. So once that one comes online, uh, we'll see how that one performs because that one has an Intel chip versus the uh, ARM-based Rock chip on here. And I'm very eager to see how all of that performs. So I'm happy to answer more questions though. Uh, leave them down in the comments below. Maybe we'll revisit this uh, over the next couple of months as it develops. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.